Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy, and today we're going to be talking about aiming, aiming on consoles specifically. It's a very tough subject to cover, it's, we're going to be here a little bit today guys, forewarning. Both simple and complex examples are going to be broken down for a full understanding, and some sections are going to be from past videos of my Crucible Tips series, but they're going to be summed up for a full understanding of the topic today. There are many guides about this all over the internet, from videos to forum posts. But this is how I think about aiming, and this is what I've learned about aiming, and most of this is going to stay true regardless of what first person shooter that you play. Before we dive into it, we're going to start off with this. Aiming is 100% muscle memory, and we're going to talk about training that muscle memory today. It's that connection of seeing something and automatically moving towards it. It's going to be your reaction time, your hand-eye coordination, it's your repetition, it's to the point of it being natural. So when your eyes see an enemy, it's the subconscious act of aiming. And most of the time when the question is asked about aiming, the answer is usually something along the lines of, I don't know, just aim. And yeah, that's true. That's the long and short of it. But it's going to be practice, practice with purpose. And we're going to be breaking things down a little bit differently today. Some things you might not even have seen before. It's not meant to overcomplicate. It's meant to be a guide. The issue with videos and information on the subject of aiming is going to be that players really expect immediate results, and for some it can have Im immediate results, but that expectation is a really tough one to achieve, so please know that going into all this, guys. If it were easy, then there would be no need to cover it. There would be no competition, everyone would just be aimbotting each other. The goal of this series of mine, with Destiny and other first person shooters, is to make them play easier for you. And for some of these things that we're going to be talking about today is going to be specific to Destiny, but most of it is universal for first person shooters on console, and some things just for aiming on PC. But with these tips, my hope is that something clicks with you, like a light bulb. Let's start off with the first section, it's our external influences, vibration and TV response time or your monitor. Number one is vibration, this is going to be up to you, we're all different, there are a lot of players that do play with vibration, and there's a lot of players like myself that play with it off. But when you're shooting or getting shot at, that sensory is there with vibration. Some players like that or they need that sensory, they love that feedback from vibration. And some players are afraid to turn it off, and a lot of times when asked about turning the vibration off, a reply usually is something like, well, how will I know I'm being shot at? And to answer that, there are visual and audio cues in this game and other games, sound and direction where the shots are coming from, and screen cues showing all over the screen that you're being shot at. And to go a little bit further, if that's the case, how do PC players know that they're getting shot at? CSGO, Overwatch, mouse and keyboard. And it, it isn't unheard of to play without vibration. The mouse and keyboard is dominant to the controller for many reasons, precision being the number one thing, but we're using our thumbs on console, we're being precise with our thumbs, and that's the reason why I play with vibration off. In a tense gunfight, I can feel that vibration in my hands, I can feel it in my thumbs, and some players might not feel it. They might not feel it in their shot, but for me personally, when it comes to vibration, these are the same thumbs I'm trying to be precise and accurate with, and I can feel them shaking with it on, so I always have it off when I'm playing PvP. It's on a person-to-person -person basis. For me, it's accuracy, and I've been playing without vibration since 2009 in first-person shooters. I've had scuffs made, and I have them rip out the rumbles. I had a Battle Beaver recently made, had them rip out the rumbles, and it also reduces the weight of the controller. And every time my wife gets a controller, we rip the rumbles out. I do have a controller for non-first-person shooter games, or when I'm doing story missions, or things like The Witcher or Elder Scrolls. I just have a completely different setup that I play those games on. And those games can be enjoyed with vibration, but for the first-person shooter, I don't want that in my gunfights personally. I don't want to tell you that this is the only way because it's not, because it is okay to play with vibration on. It might not affect you like it affects me, but if you do decide to switch vibration off, that also saves your batteries by the way. Know that it's going to feel very foreign, it's going to be awkward, and it's going to take some time to get used to. Second thing is the TV monitor, and I won't spend too much time on this. A gaming monitor does have advantages over a basic monitor or a larger screen TV. It helps avoid streaking, ghosting, blurring. I remember I played Halo on a large TV way back in the day. When moving my crosshair from left to right, the reticle itself would literally disappear at times because it was moving fast. It would be blurry. I use an Asus VX248H. It's a monitor. I have even bought two more. I have three total. These can be expensive though, and that's the issue. Now, do you need a gaming monitor to game? Absolutely not, but they do have advantages and they do affect your aiming, especially having the low response time and high hertz rating, things like that. So now we're to the point where we talk about our controller and aiming in the game, and we're going to first start off with the dead zone. My goal of this video is to give a better overall understanding and give names to things of the controller and things that we use to aim. The dead zone affects how far you have to move the stick before it actually responds. It's a small area around the analog stick's center position in which the stick won't send any information to the console. So go ahead in a custom game, if you place your thumb on the stick and move it very slightly to the left, up, down, right, you can feel it, you can see it, it's slight. 
this small dead zone does not send any information to your console, but this is there for control. Too small of a dead zone, things feel way too twitchy, and too high of a dead zone, things feel very unresponsive, if that makes any sense. And in some games, you can change the dead zone, but games where you can't change it, like Destiny, the dead zone is usually in a pretty good spot. If not, say the dead zone was very small, the smallest movement of your thumb will cause it to take off, possibly even just by resting your thumb on the controller stick. The dead zone is very important to notice, and we're going to be coming back to this later on in the guide and how it affects your overall aiming. Next is sensitivity. It's your bread and butter, and consoles are designed with aim assist in mind when aiming with thumbsticks. There's also aim acceleration in Destiny and in other games, and I don't want to make you guys dizzy, but fine movements left and right here on 5 sensitivity are just that. They're fine movements. But as I throw the stick all the way in one direction, it starts to pick up speed. It accelerates on the turn. But again, that's something to keep in mind. But in the description, there's a link to a very old video of mine, the very poor quality, and first and foremost, sorry about that, those were much simpler times for me on YouTube. But to sum it up, when using your sensitivity, you need to see your tendencies if you're overshooting or undershooting. And overshooting is when you see someone, let's say to your left, when you look to your left, your crosshair to acquire him, you shoot your reticle way past him and have to come back. If you do that consistently, your sensitivity might be a little bit too high for you. And undershooting is, is gonna be the same thing, but opposite. Your reticle doesn't quite get there before you start shooting. Now, these are just overcompensation. That's all they are. So if you record your gameplay through PSN or the Xbox DVR, and Xbox is gonna give you only five minutes, you can see your tendencies. So watching your gameplay really helps, and there's also another link in the description on how to review your gameplay with a friend on console, even with games that don't have theater mode. In a game like Destiny, you want to be accurate as well as mobile, and believe it or not, some players can do that on 3. They can be accurate and mobile. They feel comfortable with that, and some, and all, most, are going to be on 4 or 5, and others play on 10. And I've also seen players that play on 10 max sensitivity and say that it, quote, feels too slow. And I'm never, ever, ever going to tell you to play on a certain sensitivity. What we can do, though, is look at a general consensus on console. What gets lost in translation and is very misguided is when people tell you that X is the best sensitivity. That is 110% not true, guys. We're all different. We have different reaction times, different ages, different backgrounds. The best sensitivity in the game that you're playing is the one that makes you deadly. That's it. That is the best sensitivity. I play on 5. I can control that. It feels good using all weapons in the game. All you can really go on is get a general consensus. I will say this, though. I've watched a lot of competitive Halo since its first MLG tournament, a lot of Destiny. Aiming in games like Destiny require you to track your enemy. It's not a Twitch shooter like Call of Duty, and I've always said just because someone's faster than you, that doesn't mean that they're going to kill you faster, and I want you guys to let that sink in. So for the players that play on max or close to max sensitivity, if you can control it, not many can though, then do it. Or they play on max simply because it feels good. Even with our top players in Destiny, go ahead and catch a stream from one of them, or a, a YouTube video, or the like Scumpy, a, a pro Call of Duty player, there's a reason it's a little bit lower, like in Destiny in that 3 to 5 range. Sometimes a little more, a little bit less. I have only seen one person on console that can play on max sensitivity with crazy precision and movement, and it's absolutely unbelievable. There are certain things in gaming that you remember watching if you're a fan of first person shooters. Maybe it was a montage, maybe it was a gameplay. If you're a fan of gaming, and if things like this fascinate you, I suggest that you check this out. Like, go ahead and pause. Regardless if you play on a high sensitivity or not, so there's a link in the description to a Call of Duty YouTuber named Blame Truth, where he goes over what he thinks is the best Call of Duty player in the world. And this video is well over a year ago, and that player, the gameplay he shows is from a guy named Ron. Just simply Ron. He's one of the most naturally talented and gifted players I've ever seen. He uses a regular controller, no scuff, nothing like that. He plays on an insane sensitivity for Call of Duty. And to this day, I haven't seen anything like it for someone to be that precise. It's so crazy, a lot of people think that it's mouse and keyboard. But on Ron's YouTube channel, if you investigate further, he does a live gameplay with a controller cam. It's absolutely nuts. But when I see players that play on max sensitivity in Destiny or close to it, I point them to Ron. This is what you're trying to achieve. But I also let them know a couple things. This is Call of Duty, it's a Twitch shooter. There's the dance between mobility and precision, and in Call of Duty, it leans more to mobility because the Call of Duty kill times are a little bit faster. Also, Call of Duty doesn't require you to land headshots. Most of the time, kills are to the body. In Halo and Destiny, however, it requires you to land headshots. So, going for the head in PvP, being precise, be tracking them a little bit longer. So, for players who play on max, I always point them in that gameplay and say, you know what, if you can do at least 60-70% of what this guy can do, then you do you, man. It's very tough, though. I don't have the hand-eye coordination for that, and very few do. 
And we needed to talk about that, but before we start, when running around, use that triangle to aim with in pre-aim, even with sprinting with a sniper rifle. It's in all games in Call of Duty and in Halo, there's that little reticle. It helps you center to your target when you're running and, and when you're not ADS. And I made a quick video on centering a while back, link is in the description, and basically it's keeping these sights open and then centering to your target making them go to the center of your screen. There's a time to center, and there's also a time to ADS on a sight line. So the first part of aiming, step one, is target acquisition. This is something that is learned. It is very important. It's the act of going from point A to point B as fast as possible. Seeing a target and sticking right to them and sticking right where you want to aim. This is your reaction time, something that can be practiced, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. And mentally, in PvP, you're trying to land the first shot. The first shot is key. So go on a patrol, go wherever you would like to go and practice this act. When you're running around, keep your crosshair around head level, basically. And most will say aim at a captain because they're around the same height as a guardian, but it just doesn't matter. Aiming is aiming, guys. With all the maps, cover, head glitches, uneven terrain in PvP, aiming is aiming. So aim at a minotaur's face, a drag. Go up a hill and practice acquiring your target that is below or above you. But most importantly, I want you to focus on this, though. I want you to practice different distances in which you need to move your reticle, your crosshair, from both close and far away. As an example, start running and make the enemy be on your left, and then you're gonna do it on your right at a later point. So adjust your distances, make it about three meters that you have to move, five meters, then 10 meters, and then make a full turn to the left. And on those turns, most people see an enemy and they just start aiming that way. They see it and just start aiming. But here's a little tip. When you have a big distance to travel like that, in this situation, there's someone on my left. We strafe left into them and aim left. This is gonna get you there faster and generally aiming in their direction a lot quicker. So this is both sticks working together. We're gonna to talk about this later. It looks a whole lot different as well. When you track someone that is doing this, it's a tad longer if you just, just aim at them. We wanna be right to them. This is it, guys. It doesn't matter what game that you're playing. You could be shooting up bots in Call of Duty or in a custom game in Overwatch or in Battlefield. And remember that aim assist is turned on on console. You can work with that. And on PC, there are trainers for this. But on console, when you look at an enemy, aim assist is gonna slow you down. When doing this on a low level patrol, you don't even need to fire back. They can just shoot at you because they won't kill you. You're working on your target acquisition as quickly and efficiently as possible. This is the first part of aiming, guys. So when you're raiding or on strikes, Keep this in mind, all of this transfers, all of it is relevant, aiming is aiming. So do it with hand cannons, pulses, scouts, sniper rifles. When your friends aren't on, go on patrol for a little bit, spend some time there. 10-15 minutes a day, it is working on your reaction time, your muscle memory, your target acquisition going from point A to point B, it's making you deadly. So the second part of aiming, let's talk about our sticks. Our left stick is for strafing, it's our movement stick, and our right stick of course is for aiming. These coexist, they are one and they work together. And I like to think of the right stick, the aiming stick, kind of like a clock. We have a center, then we expand out in straight lines to numbers. Most of our aiming is linear or in a straight line. And this brings us to left stick and right stick dominance. The left stick, after we line up our shot, is used to keep our shot steady. And shortly we're gonna go over strafing a little bit, there's an actual video for that in the description. But as the general rule, at longer ranges, we want to be left stick dominant. When you acquire your target, say you're a little bit short or long going past or to him, you can strafe into the shot because they're so far away. We use that left stick to be precise. That isn't to say that the right stick is never used because you can make very small adjustments, but the left stick is gonna be your best bet. In medium range, both the left and right stick are gonna be working together. And we're gonna to get to that in the final part of our guide and we're gonna go over how to do that. But in close ranges, you're gonna be right stick dominant because the left stick isn't gonna have what you need. You need to be a little bit more right stick heavy when people are, are close to you. So before we get into this last section, look at these ranges, long, mid, and short, left stick dominance, both sticks, right stick dominance. Situations arise where they switch a little bit, but this is mostly how you need to look at your sticks. When we're strafing, we want to strafe to land our shots. Remember that the left stick is keeping our shot steady. So you can work on a super unpredictable strafe, but think about this, keep it tight. If you're acquiring your target fast, landing your shots, it doesn't matter what the strafe is. A hand cannon is a three shot kill. So if you land those three shots as quickly as possible, it doesn't matter who's strafing crazy or not. Quick and efficient, you can achieve the, f the fast time to kill of the weapon that you're using simply by doing this. Strafe to land your shots doesn't mean not to use the right stick though. Again, they coexist, mostly in that medium range. It's the left stick keeping you steady and the right stick making small adjustments, keeping it tight. And we're gonna talk about that in the last part, which is step three. And again, we're trying to put into words aiming and trying to simplify it. But once we're right here, 
That's the first part of aiming. We can work on this, getting on target point A to point B fast. It could be a very twitchy movement or a fast and deliberate movement. I personally like to be very loose on the thumbsticks. But once we're here, we're on our target and then we start working with our sticks. Bringing back the dead zone from earlier on the guide, let's bring up this graphic. We have the stick in the middle. The red is the area of that dead zone, the area in which no input is sent to your console. The green is your precision aim in a gunfight. It's about three quarters of the way to the edge of the stick. Once you are here, this is the zone that you need to be comfortable in. This is where you're lined up at the head, where your sticks start moving together and coexist, compensating each other to keep your shot steady. You first start with that left stick, and say you aim at them, they move to your left or to your right, we'll say left, you start strafing towards them with your left stick, but the right stick is there to make a very fine adjustment once the strafe is off. It throws your crosshair right back on, and I like to think of it simply as a linear movement, guys. Most of the time, the left and right stick are working together in horizontal lines to keep your shot true. So we're strafing with them, and once they're off a little bit, that right stick comes into play to keep you back on, and you don't really need to touch that right stick anymore. It's very fine adjustments to keep you on. But how do you get comfortable in that zone? What I like to do is to go into Bannerfall, and this is Destiny, and we'll talk about other games. But I go into Bannerfall, and at the first spawn, there's a little planner with a jump up. Now, the planner is a good distance itself for a strafe. It's not too long or too short, but there's a tree and a fence. I use the fence for distances, all the fence poles, in relation to that tree. There's no aim assist here. So what we're gonna do is you're trying to see what your sensitivity is doing, let's say when you flick it all the way to the left for a full turn, like a twitch movement, and all the way to the right. But the idea as an example, like right here in the very center lining up to the tree, we have these two inner posts. Now in a gunfight, the enemy starts strafing left and right. This is about the distance from post to post from that center tree that you're gonna be moving that crosshair. Again, aim assist is gonna be slowing you down when you're actually in the game. You can do different things. You can start at the middle tree and then start going from post to post on the outside. So on both sides, go further and further out. Go to the first one, then go back to center, then the second one go back to center, then the third, and so on and so forth. Then you start going from one opposite side to the other. It's aiming without this aim assist, getting comfortable in that precision zone. Then you start strafing and aiming. Again, you pick a target and you start going and moving towards it. Make both sticks work together, going from point A to point B. The other area is on Exodus Blue. It's at the opposite spawn. We have a fence with a center post, and it's the same exact thing that we were doing. I kind of use the trees in the background, but here on Exodus Blue, we can back up and make the distance a little bit further. So you can start seeing what you need to do with your right thumb, with your movement, your muscle memory, to get it in that direction. And that's the third part of aiming. Number one, you're gonna acquire your target. That's one of the most important things. Two, is noticing how the sticks are working at different distances, and three, getting fine in that precision zone. Not necessarily touching it and flicking it all the way to one side. Some people are a little bit twitchy. Some people are very fine and deliberate. You gotta find where you are, but within this zone, this outer zone, not touching the edges is where your fine precision aim is. And you're gonna be using that with your left thumbstick to make you accurate. All weapons act differently. Recoil compensation is also a completely different story. We solely went over aiming today. And also an example, we'll talk about pre-aiming real quick. I see a lot of players hug corners that they're pre-aiming at. You need to back that off a little bit because rarely someone will come at you at a very sharp angle. When they come out, they're gonna come out a little bit more, they're gonna knee slide or they're gonna jump around that corner, so give it a little bit of space. And say that the reticle is off of the angle that you're looking at and they do the very rare, very sharp peak. All you do is strafe into them. Simply, that's all you need to do. So keep it off a little bit. If they do a, a short angle, just strafe into the shot. There you go. And also at distances, when you're pre-aiming, do this and these fine adjustments. Use that left stick. So this has been my insight to aiming. The goal is to break down aiming with names, things like the dead zone, so you can kind of know what, what you're playing with. And to break it down into three steps. Number one, getting your reaction time and target acquisition better. The first step to aiming, point A to point B shooting. The second thing is gonna be left stick and right stick dominance and seeing how they interact with each other and how they coexist. That's something you're, that you're gonna have to work on yourself. And three is working on that precision zone for fine movements with your right aiming stick. So this is how I aim, and I'm not sure it's ever been broke down like this before. And there are things like scuff controllers, battle beaver controllers, and the battle beaver is what you guys saw in the controller cam. That's what I use, and things like control freaks as well, which that's gonna be a video later on down the line, and. It really does help within that fine zone that we were talking about in step three. So let me know in the comment section what you guys think. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, a like is always appreciated. And if you like content like this, tap the notification bell so when these things go live, you're going to know that they're there. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.
what I wouldn't give to fight again beyond the wall. I would tear out a Vex heart with my teeth. I would sear the Cabal with my burning light, challenge the fallen Kells to personal combat and scatter them. I... I've been watching too many Crucible matches. You should get to the point where anyone else would quit, and you're not gonna stop there! No! What are you waiting for? Do it! Just... Do it! Yes, you can!